A year after that, uh, we started just doing a lot more, and we, we got this entertainment attorney who was just really cool to us. He said, hey, you know, you're, you're, you're doing a lot nationally. You should definitely trademark your band name. This is something that a lot of bands do as they get big, bigger and more popular. It's just to kind of protect their, our, our name. That, and also there were other bands out there starting to call themselves the Slants, and, uh, you know, that wasn't us, and so people would get confused, and and it messed up our tours and everything like that. So we thought, okay, let's go ahead and do this. We filed an application, um, turned it in, and didn't think anything would be a big deal because I mean, our name was out there. We, we had been touring nationally for a couple of years. We had all the, all the stuff you're supposed to turn in, a lot of, a lot of legal paperwork that the lawyer handled. <laughs> um, within four months of us turning in that application, uh, he gives me a call. And he says, hey, I, I just heard from the trademark office. Uh, your, your application was rejected. And I was like, why? He said, well, they say your name is disparaging towards people of Asian descent. <laughs> and I was like, disparaging? Like, they, they think we're, you know, Asians are offended by it. And he's like, he's like, yeah. And I was like, we're Asian. <laughs> he's like, yeah. I was like, we do Asian festivals across the country. He's like, yeah. I'm like, we work with like members of president, the president's like Asian council. Yeah, but they think it's offensive. I'm like, who, who? Like, I mean, did they say anybody? And they're like, well, they couldn't find anybody, but they, but they used UrbanDictionary.com. <laughs> and I was like, so they're gonna take UrbanDictionary.com over the word of like actual Asian people? And he's like. Maybe they just don't get it. Let, let's go ahead and send them a response. And unfortunately, every time you send them a response, you have to pay like a couple hundred bucks. So I, I was like, well, this is really important, right? He's like, yeah. So I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. So I got a bunch of uh, Asian American activists, like, like lifetime activists who like, are pretty highly acclaimed and who've done a lot of great work, like including um, restoring a lot of the culture and history about the inter internment camps, and I mean, just like people who dedicated their entire lives fighting for Asian American rights. Um, we also got, uh, I think, about 20 different like major Asian American newspapers, the clippings saying like, "Hey, they write about our band. They're totally cool with us. They get it. They know what we're doing." Um, and then we also send in like a bunch of other samples of stuff. I said, like, you know, this is pretty good. It ended up being like 60 pages of stuff. We're like. You know, we don't want to overwhelm them. Okay, so we, we, we mailed it in within two weeks. So like, you know, it takes five days to get there. Within two weeks, they said no. And uh, according to UrbanDictionary.com, that's again, and this anonymous post on this message board, they, who didn't like your name, you can't do it. They still have yet to find, like they didn't find any Asians who were actually offended because the, the law states that the majority of the community has to find this thing like horribly offensive. Uh, meanwhile, I'm like, well look at, like Uncle Cracker's got his trademark, what's up with that? <laughs> you, you know, NWA has theirs. There's the NFL team, the Redskins. I was like, what's up with this? Uh, you know, and he's like, it's just up to that attorney. So we just, there was another case kind of like this. Um, for a nonprofit group out of San Francisco, they're kind of an advocacy group for the LGBTQ community um, called Dykes on Bikes. They do fundraisers and they fight for lesbian culture and they are super cool. They also got rejected and they were fighting for a while. Like it took them like three years to get their trademark. Um, but they eventually did get it and I said, well, they got theirs, so maybe there's something that we can do. So I, I kind of went through all their contacts and like explained the situation and see if they would help us out. And we did, we got an editor at the Oxford Dictionary to come on board, <laughs> we decided it's like, let me write you a 100 page paper about this word. <laughs> Tell me what it actually means and why you're kind of an idiot and why you need to listen to these guys. Um, we also got two professors, one from Washington DC, one from University of New York. We did a couple of national, national surveys. Um, people who do surveys for the Supreme Court and they said, well, you know, 92% of the people out there said no problem whatsoever. And this is across all age, um, all age ranges, and this is just sampling the Asian American community. Because um, the guy, the, the attorney is like, well, you need to have a survey, and you need to have like experts on board. And then we said, well, like, that's not enough. Let's go ahead and add a couple more like expert testimonies, like leaders and all this stuff. 
we, the report was so big that we had to ship it in a box. <laughs> it was 2,000 pages. And he's like, and I was like, do we need to like ship this? He's like, well, we could file it electronically, but I kind of want to piss the guy off. Because <laughs> he's going to have to scan every page manually and really look at this. We, we send it in, five months later, rejected again. Still, to this day, they have, I mean, this has been uh, four years and they still have not found somebody. So we're right now, uh, we're before the Trademark Trials and Appeal, Appeals Board. But, um, and our lawyer kind of got burnt out. He's like, you know, I love fighting this case. I, I really want to help you. Because he started doing it pro bono because it just took so much time. And I was like, I, I can't afford this. But he said, what you're doing here is if you win, you give the right for all minorities to define for themselves what, what they can kind of attribute to their own communities rather than to have some like white attorney in this uh, in Washington DC decide what's good for or bad for your community you will have that right to do that yourselves so he's like so I want to fight this for you um, but, but after two and a half years he's like um, you know you guys are burning me out I'm quitting the law <laughs> he's like but he helped me get a new lawyer um, who decided Let, let's try this from a different angle like instead of like fighting and fighting and fighting saying you know these we're not offensive we're not offensive and here's all this evidence Let's ask him a basic question. Why is this offensive? Why, why does he think this? And so we said, you know, we did, did a bunch of research. Over 760 applications in the US have been filed for the term slant, for a trademark of some sort. Only one in all of US history was cited for being possibly racist towards Asians, and that was mine, the, the Asian thing. Um, and we were like, well, how come all these other guys got a pass and th this one didn't? And he said, well, it's because you guys are too Asian. <laughs> what does that even mean? He's like, because, and he said, because you guys define yourselves as an Asian American band, and because you guys are Asian, people are gonna assume it's a racial slur. I was like, so if I was white, I would be able to get this trademark. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and there is a law saying you can't discriminate on race, right? And they're like, yeah, but this is a different court. So that's why we're fighting them really hard. Where if we get out of this uh, appeals board, we're gonna go to the federal court and possibly the Supreme Court. And it's just one of those interesting things that five years ago, I never thought I would have been spending all this time uh, fighting a case that might appear before the Supreme Court.